The FDA recognizes the thin prep pap test as significantly more effective than the conventional pap smear for the detection of low-grade squamous intraepithelial and more severe lesions in a variety of patient populations. But the clinician also plays the key role in making these results possible. Optimal sample collection and adequate fixation are the most important factors in improving the reliability of cytology and reducing sampling errors. Steps taken by the clinician from patient education to improved sampling technique may help ensure that the sample collected maximizes the potential of the pap test. When a pap test is compromised, it may lead to an unsatisfactory result. A variety of factors can contribute to unsatisfactory specimens. These factors include patient biology, use of personal lubricants prior to exam, excessive use of lubricant on the speculum, and improper collection technique. Focusing on factors you can control will help reduce unsatisfactory PAP results and subsequent repeat of patient visits. Successful specimen collection starts with patient education. Because PAP test results can be impacted by the presence of non-cellular materials in the transformation zone, it's important to advise patients to refrain from sexual intercourse Avoid vaginal medication, personal lubricants, vaginal contraceptives, and douches for 48 hours prior to the exam. Likewise, it's important to avoid scheduling the appointment during menses. Helping the patient prepare for the exam will help to ensure a good representative sample is collected. Position the patient and insert a speculum into the vagina. Warm water may be used to lubricate the speculum. If the patient is uncomfortable, a small amount of water-soluble, carbomer-free gel lubricant can be applied to the posterior blade of the speculum. Hologic recommends use of carbomer-free lubricant because lubricants containing carbomers may interfere with the thin prep pap test. It is important to remember to use only a dime-sized amount of carbomer-free lubricant. Apply lubricant only to the exterior sides of the speculum, avoiding the tip. Perform a brief visual examination of the cervix. Remove excess mucus or other discharge present before taking the sample. This should be gently removed with ring forceps, holding a folded gauze pad. Cells will be collected from the squamocolumnar junction, or transformation zone. This is the area where the endocervical columnar cells merge with the ectocervical squamous cells, and it is also where most dysplasia develops. Cervical specimens can be collected with a brush-spatula combination or a broom-like device. When using the brush-spatula combination, start with the spatula, which is designed to contact the ectocervix only. Select the contoured end of the spatula and rotate it 360 degrees around the entire ectocervix while maintaining tight contact with the exocervical surface. Next, rinse the spatula in the thin prep vial by swirling the device vigorously at least 10 times. Next, use the brush to obtain adequate specimen from the endocervix. Insert the brush into the cervix until only the bottommost fibers are exposed. This increases the likelihood that the brush is contacting the full transformation zone, even if it is not visible. Slowly rotate one quarter to one half turn, in one direction only. It is very important not to over-rotate the brush. Studies have shown that turning the collection device more than 180 degrees does not increase cellular yield and may cause bleeding. Rinse the brush in the same vial used for the spatula. Rotate 10 times while pushing against the vial wall. After rotating, swirl the brush vigorously to release additional cellular material. The broom-like device is designed to contact the ecto- and endocervix simultaneously. Collect the specimen by inserting the central bristles of the broom into the endocervical canal. 
deep enough to allow the shorter bristles to fully contact the ectocervix. Push gently and rotate five times in a clockwise direction. Immediately rinse the specimen into the thin prep vial by pushing the broom against the bottom of the vial ten times, forcing the bristles to bend apart. Next, Swirl the broom vigorously to release additional cellular material. When the specimen is successfully transferred to the thin prep vial, tighten the cap until the black torque line on the cap passes the torque line on the vial. Record the patient's name and identification number on the vial. Record the patient information and medical history on your laboratory cytology requisition form. In addition to the pap test, specimens collected in the thin prep vial may also be tested for HPV, chlamydia, gonorrhea, and trichomonas. In fact, the thin prep pap test is the only liquid-based test with FDA approval clearance for pap, HPV, chlamydia, gonorrhea, and trichomonas testing from the same vial. To order these tests, complete the requisition form. Then, place the vial and the completed requisition form in a specimen bag for transport to the laboratory. Thank you for reviewing the Thin Prep Specimen Collection Protocol. To learn more, please visit thinprep.com. If you would like additional information on specimen collection protocol or guidelines, please visit the American Society for Colposcopy and Cervical Pathology or the Clinical and Laboratory Standards Institute websites.